Cure to screw it. <laughs> Welcome to our new show, Cue It or Screw It. I'm Kai Hogan. And I'm Andrew Teeter. The gist of this show, basically, uh, if you have Netflix, you probably have like 150, 200 plus. Maybe 500. Yeah, maybe that many. Just movies saved up in your instant queue, and you probably spend, you know, 15 minutes before a movie just deciding what to watch. Well, our job here is to tell you whether or not to cue it or screw it. So basically, that'll save you a little time going into it, and you'll know based off of our recommendations, which we like to think pretty highly of, uh, whether or not it's a good film to watch. So, with further ado, take my word for it. This will be great. <laughs> so the first movie we watched this week was Girl Walks Into a Bar. Now, interesting thing about this, this movie originally was made just for YouTube. Shangri-La Entertainment wanted to make a movie that was just for YouTube, got together a bunch of uh, big stars, and this is a pretty star-studded ensemble cast, don't get me wrong, uh, and put this movie together, I think, two, three years ago? It was sometime in December, either my freshman or sophomore year of college. Um, they put it together, put it out on YouTube, and it, it did get some pretty good traction, and now I see that it's on Netflix, and for your viewing pleasure instantly. All right, so what did you think of this movie? I thought it was a really, really simple story. <clears throat> it's, there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, the story is set in 10 separate locations, uh, and it kind of pulls it all together slowly but surely, uh, bringing, bringing the 10 bars and what's, what's kind of happening in the 10 bars um, together. Uh, the biggest, the best part about this movie is the use of secondary characters um, in those individual bars to push the story forward and, and to really, really drive the story um, yeah. beyond good just a generic um, movie. Mm -hmm. Lots of good cameos. So what, what was your favorite cameo? Oh, I don't know. I had two. I really liked the Danny DeVito one. I thought that was one of the most effective ones. One that I would have liked to have seen more and his story doesn't really get all that resolved is Robert Forrester's. Because I really like Robert Forrester. I think he's a great actor. Um, and just to see the kind of the father-daughter, he's his daughter's in the film, not his actual daughter, but in the context of the film. Uh, and there's kind of a strained relationship there. And he talks about it with his son a little bit, but then nothing really happens with the daughter, and I would have liked to have seen a little more resolution there. But uh, the Danny DeVito one, I thought was short, sweet, and effective. Like, it mm -hmm. starts off, he's trying to tell like some joke, and someone keeps interrupting him. Uh, and I, I, think it, I think it works, because it's supposed to stay kind of ominous and you're wondering what he's all mm -hmm. about so well and, and Danny DeVito is presented as this really shady character <laughs> and he's kind of telling a shady joke and it, it ends up <laughs> not being as shady as you think it's gonna be uh, you keep waiting for this big punchline and then there isn't one <laughs> it's, it's really not a very hold on joke. let me finish the joke hold on let me finish the joke flat punchline that uh that was the joke it, it definitely works for Zachary Quinto's character because he's a character that you're thinking Oh, this guy's just kind of a terrible guy. Mm -hmm. And then through uh, running an errand for Danny DeVito, you're like, oh, he's just kind of caught in the middle. And then you remember, like, at the very beginning, it's like, I don't mince words. I want my wife dead. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, bad guy. But then you're like, oh, he feels bad about it. And it's, it's kind of interesting because you put him with someone who's worse, and then you realize, oh, he's really not that bad. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and, and there's not really a, a main, main character uh, with Girl Walks Into a Bar. No, uh, uh, the closest thing to that would be Carla Gugliano, and I don't remember her, her last name's Driver, I remember that. Yes, uh, yeah. In the film. Yeah, and, and really, but really she's not in, she's in maybe a half, maybe 60% mm -hmm. of the scene. She's more the through story. Yeah, um, she's really the, the only part that, that makes, that draws the, the She's kind of like the the main thread and everything that everything yeah. else branches off from. Yeah. Some things that didn't work, there are some cameos and some characters that just fell short. And I mean, when you've got this many characters just jam-packed into something, obviously something's going to fall flat. Probably the two for me were, and I would say the exact same thing about Sin City, because <laughs> it's the same two people, um, Alexis Bledel, who's great in Gilmore Girls, and I want to like her and everything else, but she's just... Not that good. And then Josh Hartnett, who again, it, like just like he does in Sin City, kind of bookends it through like an outside context, which is fine, but eh, it just kind of falls flat for me. Yeah, it, it's nothing special. And yeah, you have an expect, you have a hope that it's going to be special. And it just He's never, just there. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then he's in one scene, and it's like, oh, he just Great, he's really, trying to hit on Rosario Dawson. Yeah, he just really finds Rosario Dawson attractive. Who doesn't? She is a Exactly. Kid. And her so, cameo, I thought, was great. Like, she utilized every bit of her screen time to the fullest. One thing that I think is really important about Girl Walks Into a Bar to talk about is that there's kind of an expectation when you talk about bar movies and there's a strip club scene, there's kind of an expectation that it's going to be a really raunchy, outrageously dirty movie. Mm -hmm. um, this movie isn't. It's uh, not. Which, it's very tame. It's very tame. Uh, but keep in mind, it was also originally made originally for, YouTube for YouTube again. True, and I didn't know that when I watched it. Um, but you almost wouldn't even think that, though. No, you would just think, no. oh, that's just the style of the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the strip club, w when I was watching the movie, um, they panned into the strip club, mm -hmm. and I knew my roommate's mom was coming over, and I said, <laughs> uh, I am stopping Netflix. <laughs> I'm going to watch some football or something. And uh, then she left, and I, I was like, okay, I need to start watching this movie again. So I turned my, turned my Netflix back on, and start watching it and I'm like, wow, this is not what I expected. I expected, expected, you know, gratuitous shots of women, like, oh, Or like know, even in the background yeah, of like, exactly. in the strip club. Exactly. And I think, is the movie R or is it PG-13? Um, I think it might not be rated because it was originally for YouTube. Yeah, that's so, something they have to check. But yeah. So it, it's definitely got some raunchy dialogue, but mm -hmm. as far as like, seeing anything, yeah. The worst you're going to see are black sensor bars. And the stroke up scene is actually really tasteful, really funny, really fun, um, really <laughs> thoughtful. The only which is something I've never said or considered about strip. The only reason you'd be uncomfortable watching it is if you find yourself, oh shit, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> which neither Kyle nor I am. Correct. So in the end, I would definitely say cue this movie if you want something that's. Fun, definitely has a lot of great actors, uh, just having fun. It's kind of like a good demo reel for a lot of these actors. Mm -hmm. So you get to see just a little bit of what they can do. Sure, you want to see a lot more, but then you lose how many characters and a little bit of the story along with it. So I think for what it is, it knows it's not the best thing in the world. It and doesn't it doesn't try to be. be. It doesn't try to be, which is great. So it's very characteristic of something you would find on YouTube, um, which I think is a good thing. That sounds like that's such a bad connotation when you talk about Netflix. It's definitely one of those background movies. Like you could be doing homework or something, mm -hmm. have this on in the background as entertainment, but not feel like you're missing too much mm -hmm. by having your attention strained a little bit. So I would say, yeah, I'd, I'd still go with Q. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'd give it, give it a mid-level Q. Yeah. I'd say it's, it's definitely not the movie that you need to watch right away, but it's a movie that you want to move up in your queue, and if you have the opportunity and, and just kind of want to zone out, Definitely pop that bad boy on and start watching it. I uh, hope you found this review helpful. Uh, anything else you have to add on this? Um, no, not really. All right. Well, I'm Kai Hogan. I'm Andrew Teeter. And you can either like, comment, or subscribe to us on here to see other videos, other reviews, uh, chat with us about other movies that you'd like to see or other things you'd like to have featured in the show or just things that you thought about the film that we might not have covered. Feel free to talk to us on here or Blogspot. Uh, we'll put a link to that up here and also in the description as well as our Twitter handle at Q or Screw. So feel free to contact us on any of those mediums and we'll do our best to get back to you and definitely take whatever you have to say into consideration. So we like having this be a community thing, so feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, tell us what you want us to watch. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Yeah. This has just started for me. And if this clown creeps you out, probably won't go away, but you can <laughs> tell us if it does and we'll consider changing it to something else. So. It's all up to you. Just talk to us. Feel free. If so. we change it, it will be to another cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So until next time, cue it or screw it.